Hello, I'm Simran Lehal. I'm currently a Youth Council member of the MHCC. And before we get started here, I just want to acknowledge and thank the presenters and organizers today, and importantly, all the participants we have on the call today, and to acknowledge the great work that you do in your community. So thank you for being on this call. Um, so I'm going to talk today about uh, my experiences in Hay River Northwest Territories on a service program I'm doing this year. So my talk today focuses on my experiences um, with community and school-based programs that can be safe spaces for promoting wellness and mental health. So we know that we have a statistic from the MHCC that 70% of adults living with mental health problems develop symptoms in childhood or early adolescence. So this highlights the importance of what I think are two main things. So number one, promoting safe spaces for youth, and number two, promoting training in early recognition and support of mental health issues. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a, just a picture of Hay River. Uh, Hay River is located on the south shore of Great Slave Lake. So this year I'm on a placement with Frontiers Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization that advances education and housing in northern communities by sending in uh, willing and able volunteers. Next slide, please. So here this is the school that I um, assist support staff um, with programs and services for youth. Uh, called Diamond Jeunesse Secondary in Hay River. Next slide, please. Um, so here I have experienced individual and community wellness interventions in both informal settings and in more formal organizational or program settings as well. So I'm going to talk about three examples here. So the first one, um, next slide, please, is the Lights On uh, Youth Program. So this program has started in Hay River, and it's been adapted in other communities, including Inuvik. So this program was uh, created by the interagency um, Hay River Drug Strategy Team, and it was identified by the community as a safe place for youth to go on weekends um, to provide uh, cooking, games, cultural arts and crafts, and physical activity. So this was identified as an outcome of uh, the drug strategy and promoting safer communities. And our next program is the Leadership and Resiliency Program. So this program is, is built into the school curriculum, so it has great uptake by youth. Um, the Lights On program that I had just discussed previously is well attended. So the Lights On program has about 40 to 60 youth participating per uh, weekend evening, which is great for this, this community here. So back to this Leadership and Resiliency Program. So again, it, it's built into the school curriculum, so it has great uptake and students recognize this program as uh, quite, quite legitimate and quite a safe space in the school to talk about resiliency, service learning, and alternative adventure and leadership activities. So this program is team run by a social worker and a uh, teacher, and it promotes coping strategies, goal setting, and healthy positive relationships. And actually with the MASK program that Stephanie just talked about in her presentation, um, the Leadership and Resiliency Program, did a project very similar to the MASK program, and it had great uptake. So our last um, program that I'm going to talk about, next slide, please. Slide number 110. Great. So mentorship, and I think this is the most important uh, key part of creating relationships with youth to promote healthy and positive interactions and discuss mental health issues and provide protection and support around issues that youth experience. So mentorship, so I've experienced um, components of mentorship often in informal settings. So for example, in, in, in class, at uh, uh, extracurricular activities, such as homework club or sports and, and theater practice. So I think that mentorship is key because it connects youth one-on-one -on -one with a caring and, and trusting adult. And you can really build a, a key, strong relationship where youth feel safe to talk about what they're going through. So this highlights the importance of adults, teachers, and staff trained in areas such as mental health, first aid, or other support or professional development programs regarding mental health issues. So our next slide, please. So um, in summary, by supporting youth, the community of Hay River has taken positive steps for the health and well-being of the entire community. So, it's, so it seems like it's having definite ripple effects in the community, particularly with the Lights On program. Um, so early intervention and support by multiple stakeholders, including schools and communities, is really important in recognizing mental health issues in youth and combating stigma. 
So just to um, add and comment on some of the uh, topics that we discussed today in this webinar. So number one, I feel that youth are concerned and deeply sensitive to issues of social justice. And I think that youth have an almost innate sense of fairness. Um, and I think the presenters today really touched on engaging youth and uh, acknowledging that youth, youth are concerned about the world around them and issues regarding stigma and mental health. Um, so number two, the Let's Call BS campaign. Um, so Jeff spoke about this campaign. And so far, we are in development with a leadership and resiliency program in getting this uh, Let's Call BS campaign out into the, the school this year. So again, it is a bit delayed. But the great thing about the Let's Call BS campaign is that the resources and materials are available online and can be accessed. Um, and also, this highlights the importance of, of crosstalk within the school system, uh, engaging with your teachers, support staff, and administration in communicating around programs and integration of um, uh, learning and, and campaigns there. So thank you so much. Thanks, Simran.